Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Alpert. I'm an undergraduate researcher here at Purdue University. I am currently researching under uh, Dr. Tepole, and we are currently working on the Minecraft SVH Solver mod. So I'll go through everything you need to know about the basics of the mod and what our intentions are going forward to make this mod great. So a little bit about the background on the project. The goal for this project is to create a tool for high school students and college students to help them engage more easily with engineering concepts and stuff like that while uh, building on that with Minecraft, which is such a popular game across the world. Uh, so we think combining those two things would be a great uh, tool for education and definitely a good way to outreach to people who may have never seen it before or never would have considered this as an option or considered engineering as an option for their career. So what the mod is based off of is Smooth Particle Hydrodynamics, or SPH for short. This is the research that uh, Dr. Tapole has been working on, and he came to us to help implement uh, his code into Minecraft. So what the, pro what the program does is that it is a simulation tool that uses a large set of particles and then uses the neighboring particles to help determine what the stresses and forces should be on each individual particle. And then that is looped through time until you get a final result, which is what we then use to change the colors of the blocks, which we'll, we will see later. If you'd like to see more about the math behind it or more details about the program, you can contact me or Dr. Tepole for more information. Now we can get into the demo of the mod itself. We'll first start with all of the blocks that come included with the mod. We have the Tepoleum block and the load block. So what you're going to want to do is build your structure out of these Tepoleum blocks. And then if you would like to add any external forces, you can add the load blocks on top of any block to add a force to it. So once you've built your structure, we have a few commands that you can run. The first is the main command, the run sph command. That has three arguments, one of which is mandatory. That one is the stress or position. So by either saying stress or position, that will determine how the mod colors the blocks at the end of this simulation. Next, we have the long or short. By picking long, it will always do the entire number of time steps that you set in your properties file. Short will try to look if there's any stable time step before that final step and it will end the simulation early if it does find that. And that parameter is optional and it will always default to long if you don't specify. And then finally, the radius is the radius around your player that it will look for the Tipoleum blocks to run the mod for. That defaults to 32 blocks. Then, once your structure is ran, we have the reset blocks command. That will take any of the wool blocks and reset them back to Tipoleum blocks if you would like to change your structure or rerun it with different parameters. Then we have the sph properties command. By just running sph properties, that will bring up an entire list of all the parameters that we have for the mod. Then if you'd like to change one of them in game, you can do sph properties space the name of the command space the value you'd like to change it to. And make sure that name exactly matches the name on the list, otherwise it won't be changed correctly. Then some little troubleshooting uh, items that you may run across in your use of the mod. If your structure turns green and red, that means it has failed our geometry check. So what you want to do if that happens is you want to go to all the blocks where it is red and add more blocks around it. That is because the way the mod works or the way the simulation works is that it needs a certain amount of particles adjacent to each block for it to do all the calculations it needs to do. So by adding more blocks, it'll be able to do those calculations and the simulation can run. If your structure either turns purple or black, that means that your ultimate stress is not at a value it needs to be at. 
If it turns purple, that means your ultimate stress is too high. So you'd want to lower that and so you can get the full range of stress values. If your structure is almost entirely black, that means your ultimate stress is too low and the stresses have all exceeded that ultimate stress. The mod can be used in a lot of different ways. Right here is showing different cantilevered beams with varying cross sections, and that will show you the amount of deflection and how it changes based on the shape of the cross section. This is the same kind of idea, except the beam is supported at both ends instead of just one. And you can see in the middle where it turns red will be the area of maximum deflection. You can also do things like trusses, or here is kind of a, a long bridge with trusses on either end. And it shows you based on the colors where the highest stresses are. Small bridges work the same way. This is the deflection showing again right in the middle where it's maximum. And this is a little bit bigger bridge supported from the bottom. Shows you where the stresses are. So right there on the inside of those supports is a high stress area. Same sort of idea here except the bridge is only supported in the ends. And you see where those stress, high stress areas are in the red. You can also do things like animals and look at, for instance, the legs and see how changing the shape of the leg will affect where the highest stresses are and also the maximum value of those stresses. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this mod and a lot of really interesting things you can do with it.